Hello, and welcome to my little part of the internet. My name is Faye, and I've been making unboxing videos on YouTube for about a year now, but I've really wanted to expand my videos. Right now, I am going to be using still images, but once I get things figured out, I might be able to show clips. I'm not sure. But thank you for checking out these early videos. I definitely do appreciate it. Thank you for checking out my third video for my Disney analysis videos and my first focusing on a Disney movie, this being Snow White and how it gained acclaim for using colour in a feature animation. When I was a child growing up with such movies as The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin and The Lion King, Snow White was seen as a little too simple for me and a little too easy. She was always kind-hearted to everyone and never seemed to have stubbornness as do the main female characters in each of the previously mentioned movies. However, Snow White holds significant importance for the use of colour in a full-length animation, and this colour can lead to an audience connection with her. Snow White came out in 1937, which was long after the first colour used for motion pictures, the Kinema Colour Process from England in 1908. In 1916, Technicolor was used in Hollywood, and in 1932, it switched to Cinecolor. This meant that a lot of movies were using colour before Snow White. Rivaling the notion of Snow White, Flowers and Trees was actually the first animated film released with Technicolor. Technicolor, however, did not get perfected until 1932, and they approached Disney so they could showcase it. This approach to filmmaking was quite impressive, but to have Disney use it, Disney wanted to be the exclusive user of this process. The deal was finally signed in 1936, and Disney was able to use this new technology to create Snow White. This is how Snow White is the first movie in Technicolor, leading to the myth that it was the first in color. Despite the fact that Snow White is not the first full-length color animated movie, it does use colours well. In fact, you can find art books focusing on Snow White, which have a greater focus in the trees, whether they be the general woodland scenes of a scary forest. Snow White itself was created with cell animation as the drawing surface for the characters. The sheets were put on top of painted or drawn backgrounds. One unique thing about the Snow White backgrounds, which you would not have today in a world of, color, uh, of computer animation, is that the artists use watercolours. Some people these days see the backgrounds as beautiful, even without the characters on them. In producing the movie, all of the artists were strongly encouraged to take art classes where the line and colour balance was stressed, and artists were able to draw real-life animals. The process, of course, started with overlaying the characters in a clean animation style of the background of the painted background which led to the artist deciding what colour palette would fit best with the scene before the characters were painted. That is why you will see different colours depending on the mood of the piece. Within the movie of Snow White, there were as many as 729 different backgrounds for which colours had to be discussed to create a continuous story. When thinking of the hard work that the animators did for Snow White, I often have more admiration for this piece. In the next video, I will be covering character design in the movie, but I hope you enjoy the facts in this piece. If you have any questions or thoughts regarding these classic movies, let me know. I'd love to delve into some topics, and thanks for checking out this video. I hope you continue to remain safe and have a good day. Links provided for the information on this video are going to be provided in the comments section. Again, thank you and goodbye.